Hi, Vintage Guitar people. Welcome to Have Guitar Will Travel, presented by Vintage Guitar Magazine, with your host, me, James Patrick Regan, otherwise known as Jimmy from the Deadlies. Today I'm speaking with Spencer Henderson. He's the owner of West Coast Pedal Boards. We discuss his transition from working in IT, working in temperature monitoring and agriculture, and also operating a training business, to building modern vintage pedal boards. Spencer has done a wonderful job of providing useful videos on social media platforms for do-it-yourselfers. Everything from pedal board construction to wiring and most importantly soldering. Check him out on Facebook and Instagram at West Coast Pedal Board. We also talk about Gary Holt from Exodus and Slayer's pedal board and an extensive build for Gibson for their NAM boot. If you enjoy vintage styling, his pedal boards are a joy to look at. Check him out at westcoastpedalboard.com. Please like, comment, and share this podcast. I'd really appreciate it. Here's Spencer. So I'm here in Forestville, California. Is that right? That's it. The Fulton Valley, maybe? Uh, Russian River Valley. The Russian River Valley. Yeah. That was close. Yeah, it's, it's close. And I'm with Spencer Henderson. And you are the owner proprietor of West Coast Pedal Boards. Yeah, in all of its glory. Exactly. It's a beautiful <laughs> shop. Thanks. Beautiful pedal boards. Thank you very much. Where'd you grow up? Uh, just the town north here, uh, Windsor. Okay. So yeah, five minutes, Windsor, California. It was a small town, and now it's like kind of a desirable place. Just oh like yeah. This whole area, you know. Yeah. Oh no yeah. This is the actual wine country. This is wine country. I mean, the you know the view outside is Nothing wine country. Great. So you grew up in, in Windsor. Mm -hmm. What kind of what kind? Were you listening to music? What were you doing? Yeah, not. I mean, you know, it's kind of embarrassing to say, but but I'm not really a big music person. You know, can you know as much as I think I should be being in this industry. You know, uh -huh. I kind of consider myself to be more kind of like a. Uh, Leo Fender style person, you know, where he could build the shit really good and yeah. not really play it all that well. So that's <laughs> kind of I should you say know. that there's a huge collection of vinyl in your in here in your shop. Yeah, yeah. Um my my friend uh, my good friend Ryan actually he worked for me for quite a long time. Um uh, he kind of turned me on and um yeah, it's just kind of it's it's a problem now, you know. Like two, <laughs> three records a week and oh, wow. yeah. That's yeah. great. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, it's a good little hobby, you know. My kids are getting into it and they're seeing it. So I think it's important, you know. Did when you grew up were you out watching bands and stuff? Um, growing I mean, you know, that didn't really start for me until, you know, we could drive, you know. So I was the youngest that seemed in my high school class, so I was kind of at the will of my friends. So we, the, the first concert, I was actually just looking through all my concert stubs was Metallica and Korn opening for them wow. at the Arco Arena in 96. Wow. So that was like my first live show experience. Uh -huh. And I just remember afterwards going out and buying pretty much all the Metallica shit that was op available at that time, just because it blew my mind. You know, it was the huge crushing introduction to music big music big music big, big big production big music yes yeah yeah i saw metallica probably some of their first shows mm -hmm. and so it, it got very large <laughs> yeah i mean you know and as like <clears throat> you could see a lot of those bands in their earlier stages and you could tell you know just by the videos and even the old school video that they were taking you could tell like uh -huh. they were on the way, you know, and I'm sure it was very similar to that, you know. Did you go to college? Um, I tr I went to a little bit of college. Um, the you know Santa Rosa JC. I tried sure. that. It's and one I'm, of the better JCs. It's very... a it's a really good school. Um, I just am not a school, you know, like math and science. I like certain subjects, history, science, mm -hmm. you know, theology, even. Uh, I'm just not a book person like, hey, do this homework. I'm more of like hands-on, you know, doing this kind of work, yep. more hands-on. So um, that wasn't really for me. Uh, it was more of vocational school afterwards. So, you know, the JC thing happened right after high school, like everybody, you know, as it kind of does. Yeah. And it just didn't work for me, you know, mm -hmm. really bad grades, didn't want to be there, just didn't feel right. So I just quit. Uh -huh. And work, you know, these shitty jobs yes. for 
I don't know, five, six, seven, eight years, it seemed like. All my friends were graduating college, doing their career thing. And so at that point, it was just kind of like, I need to do something. And I started a vocational school for IT work and started an IT company. And wow. And that, yeah, before the pedal boards, I was an IT guy for like 10 years. You okay. Know, I had my own company and everything. So, But that's quite adventurous to, to start your own. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've always kind of been the entrepreneurial person, you know, I've I, my parents tell me stories of like going to school with a little black book and keeping people's names in there and selling gumballs to kids at school. And like, Hey, wow. if they didn't have money, I would write their name down in this book and then come like fucking collecting the next wow. day, <laughs> which is, I don't know, you know, it's, it's kind of weird for a little kid to do that. But <laughs> and with the IT stuff you did, what was it around? Um, it was, well, it started out, uh, I was hired out right out of this vocational school. I was hired by a telemetry company Uh and we were, I was basically a field engineer at that point. So we did installations of telemetry equipment. In our case, it was uh, weather station equipment, high end Uh, weather stations. So we would, you know, the companies would fly us all over the world Uh and we would do these installations, uh, to help. So, for instance, you know, we one of the trips, the most mem- one of the most memorable trips was uh, to Nicaragua. Wow! And so it was me and a coworker, and we were hired by Chiquita Banana uh-huh. to go down there and, and train some of their employees how to run these weather monitoring sure. equipment. And so, weather and so, weather monitoring is very big in agriculture. Yeah, it's huge. And so weather, you know, being uh, irrigation, yeah. you know, how, you know, so so it was really a really cool job, um, you know, because it was always different. We were traveling a bunch. Yeah. Uh, if, and I was young. I was like 21, 22, 23, you know, with the wow. company Amex card going all over the place, you know. Uh-huh. So it was a really cool gig. Uh, um, I really liked it. And. It was just kind of like the company was was not really doing much and actually, you know, uh, just came to a point where me and a couple of the coworkers just started our own thing on the side. Uh-huh. It kept growing and growing and growing, an IT company. Sure. And we just kind of left, okay. you know, parted okay. ways. Yeah. Um, uh, and that's how, you know, then the following 10, 12 years was basically me just doing this computer gig, uh-huh. you know. And it, it ranged from... You know, helping people with viruses on their computer to, you know, our, one of our biggest companies was Russian River Brewing. Okay. So we helped set up their infrastructure and POS Plan- systems and, and you know. And Pliny the Elder. And- yeah. <laughs> got the hookups with that. <laughs> Natalie and Vinny, you know, cool people. If you hear this, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Very yeah. good. So, so how did you make the tra- what 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 led to the transition into into the pedal board? Oh. Yeah, um, it you know it was at the end it was really good money, man. Like you know how, it takes a little while to develop the business, any business, you mm-hmm. know. So took took a while to get it rolling, and it seemed like right as I had the thing easy breezy, you know, cruising, it just started. Be- it wasn't fun at yeah. all. It was actually really depressing. I was depressed a lot. Didn't really know it at the time, but uh-huh. I was just like not wanting to do the work. Sure. Because all the people, uh, it wasn't their fault, but they would call me under duress. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Some were, you know, mission critical businesses. So it was like, get over here quick and fix this shit because, you know, we can't charge any money and, you know, things are broken. So, you know, I'm getting calls on Sunday, Sunday night, which was fine. I was a single guy and just kind of roaming around, but uh, you know, I was like always on call. Sure. So you're, you're the point man. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And you know, I was living that life for so long where it was just no vacations I felt bad if I had to tell people I couldn't make it, you know, because I was doing something for yeah. myself, you know. Yeah. So uh, it was 2011, I started messing around with the pedal board thing, you know. Um, I had no experience, I have no, had no experience with woodworking or upholstery work or electronics. I had had a couple guitars, I had a Gibson Les Paul. You know, I had way nicer equipment than I should have had sure. for the level of ah. playing that I could do. Sure. Um, and so so I had experience playing a little bit, you know, and I had these pedals uh, in our office. And I shared an office space with a guy who also played a little bit. So we actually 
partitioned off a good sized space for a little jam room. Uh-huh. And, and, you know, I got a pro tool set up, we got a snake in there and we had people, it was inside this business park. And so after a while people started, you know, uh, realizing we had jam sessions going on in the middle of the day uh-huh. at night, you know, we were just like kind of living a pretty cool life for a minute there. And, uh, people would just be stopping by jamming with us at all, you know, at night, during the day, during business hours, wow. it didn't matter. You know, we, and so we had this, this little space set up and, uh, I had all the pedals on the floor and nothing would work. So that's kind of how the company started. You know, I figured there had to be an, been a better way. Uh-huh. And so I made a couple prototypes of the thing. Of The early ones looked like total shit. Looking at the pictures back, you know, uh-huh. um, total nightmare. Were there other com- <laughs> other pedal board companies that you saw at the time that, and that you were like... Yeah, yeah. There, there Actually, there was a dude. Um, what is his name? He, it was like... It was like Cougar Pedal Boards or something like that. Uh, Puma. Puma. Puma Boards. So that dude had kind of like the racing stripe theme going, you uh-huh. know, like the sec- you know, the yeah. separating the colors. And <clears throat> I was into racing and hot rods and motorcycles. So that was kind of like a cool theme. And I kind of, you know, drove with that. Yeah. J- or jived with it, you uh-huh. know. And so the first... The first several were kind of like racy themed, you know, right. rally stripes or ra- racing stripes, and that's kind of how it, how it kind of started developing. You know, uh-huh. the first, the first couple of years were real rough. The quality was not very good um, <laughs> at all. You know, uh, looking back, it was really bad. And uh, I appreciate uh, your honesty. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And if anybody hears this and you actually have one of those early ones still. Get a hold of me and I will replace it for free, <laughs> pretty much. Um, sorry, <laughs> but yeah, it, it it you know it quickly developed. You know, I had mm. friends that were woodworker by trade. You know, so I would you know they would totally graciously help me. Like, mm. hey, dude, you need to switch using this material and use this better yeah. grade of plywood right. or. You know, hey, you need to get this tool to expedite these processes or, you know, because I do nothing. I was a computer guy and I, you know, I was a hot rod guy so I could tinker and use my hands. But woodworking and upholstery work were, yeah. it was all new. So, you know, setting up jigs and fixtures and using these power tools, it was all new. Yeah. You know, soldering, all of it was new. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. But you, it took off for you. <laughs> It kind of did, you know, I mean, it it was real rough, man. So while I was starting this, I was, I was still doing the IT thing because, you know, the money, money. the money, (laughs) you got to make money. Yeah. So it took, it took a while. Yeah. I think I had, you know, a couple years of starting the pedal board thing before I quit the IT thing Uh before it was like, okay, I can, I think, you know, if I, if I forfeit this thing all the way. Yeah. And devote the time to this, I think it would work. You know, and there's been some hairy times and there still there still is, sure. you know, where it's just like, wow, you know, why are, why isn't anybody ordering anything right yeah, now? Exactly. Like, am I not, you know, doing the social media thing, which I hate to do yeah. in the first place? You know, am I not doing that right? Well, you do it quite I, well now. Uh, it, you know, it's real hard, man. It, it, it just takes a lot out of me to, to come up with something that I think is supposed to... Yeah. Appeal, to, you know, it's just, I'm the guy that likes to take the shit outside and put it on the concrete, take a picture of it and no filters like here. Yeah, you know, this if, is what it is. if you like this, then you're going to buy it. If you don't, then that's fine too, you yeah. know, yeah. but there's those moments where it's like, dude, you know, should I be putting these things on a white background? Nobody's buying anything right now. Yeah. You know, so we just had one of these periods where we, we redid the website. You know, huge undertaking, you know, because it's a huge monster at this point. You know, yeah. we do so many different. What's the address? Just, just so we get West Coast Pedalboard.com. Okay. Yeah. Very or cool. pedalboardparts.com. Okay. Same. And so the undertaking was huge, you know, got in a little bit over my head with the project and, you know, switching it is always nerve wracking. You know, yeah. the thing is running as is, you know, the old one was running, sales coming in, everything's. Yeah. And, you know, it's like when you finally get ready to go, okay, let's switch everything. I mean, without going into all the details of what it takes, it's kind of frightening, yes. you know. and Even and, for an IT guy. Yeah. <laughs> and that's, that's you know, and I felt like I was fairly prepared, you know. Yeah. 
I actually met a really good dude, um, Casey Spinell from Ohio. He's he's basically like our web guy now. He's like an advanced web dude. He totally saved our ass, man. Um, you know, I was I was developing this this thing, and it's a WordPress site with a WooCommerce uh, e-commerce platform. Uh-huh. So it's it's fairly straightforward. So we get all the products loaded in there, and the thing is just running like total shit, super slow. Couldn't figure it out for like weeks. I'm sitting here working and it's just like going at a snail's pace. So I put a message out on Facebook, you know, through our, our, our West Coast channel. Yeah. And we found a, we found him, you know, and he called up and he's just been really good, man, dude. Like total save, total save, saved it, uh-huh. saved it. You know, within a couple hours, basically, we had talked and he was already doing the work, it seemed like. And the thing was just whipped into shape. Wow. Like, beautiful. Yeah. And now, you know, it's been about two weeks since we've launched it. And we've, you know, had a couple little issues. But it's running really good now. Cool. Yeah. I'm glad you're here. Yeah, me too. I'm, I feel like I can, you know, breathe a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So when people approach you to for a pedal board... Are they buying just a blank pedal board or are they shipping you pedals and you put it together? Is it a, some sort of combination of all that? Or? Yeah, you know, um, so in the beginning it was a, just a custom shop. You know, we didn't. I didn't really have a website set up. Didn't have any explanation of all the features and options and things. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, fast forward to now, seven years later now, um, it's fairly well organized where... You know, you could buy a pedal board and that's it. You could buy a pedal board in a case and that's it. You can buy a pedal board, a case and a wiring job and that's it. Uh-huh. And we even, you know, we work with uh, all of the big gear, you know, yeah. vendors. So, you know, we've had people say, these are the pedals I want. Build the board, the case. We want the wiring and buy the pedals from you all in one shot. You know, wow. so it's like a huge project Yeah. from, you know, basically raw material yeah. To a finished no custom thing. So that's but for a guitar player, someone who's as inept as I am, as you know. Yeah, yeah. That, that's that's huge. That's huge that you can do have from from raw material to to having a finished pedal board. <laughs> yeah, it, it's cool. I mean, it's very rewarding, you know, um, because the way that it, that it's working now is you know we're known a little bit, and and people who want a certain thing like a style. They call us. Uh-huh. There's just, you know, it's just, there, there's not many people doing it. So, so if people want like a hot rod looking pedal board, yeah. we usually get the call, you know, if they want something with the interior design in the case, nobody does that except for us. So we, we get those builds, you know? Yeah. So the, the people that kind of understand now, like what we do, you know, yeah. the gallery page that we have now, it's got so many pictures dating from 2012 to now, uh-huh. the style choices and, and, uh, aesthetic combinations and the, the useful features combinations are endless basically, you know, yeah. with all the different types of wood and the different types of vinyl and Tolex and tweed stylings and, I mean, you can build whatever you want. Really. Yeah. So, is there a pattern to the to the different types of effects that you have on your board, the different pedals you have on your board? Is there like do you do um, time space pedals in, in a certain at a certain place, wah wah pedals at a certain place? Sure. Yeah. Distortion units. Yeah. The what we try not to do is be consultants for people's tone. You uh-huh. know, because it's a very personal thing. Like I told you before, I'm not a very good player anyways, yeah. so I don't, <laughs> for me to set up, a, you know, somebody's rig, I know that I'm going to wire it the right way. I know that if they tell me that they need these inputs and these outputs, mm-hmm. I know that the wiring is going to be rock solid. Sure. I know that I can set it up and we're going to, we're going to give them a product that is reliable. Yeah. I don't want the responsibility of, of, of figuring out which pedal goes where. Dude, because you know, I mean, I like... You know, I have pedals. I have a pedal board. I, I I like to mess with the stuff, but you could sit there all day long. I just don't have the time to do it. Sure. You know, um, maybe at some point we, you know, we bring somebody in that could yeah. consult to do that. I don't know. It's not me, though. Yeah. You know, I, I like to do the wiring um, and I can, we advise on, you know, basic signal routing things, but I'm not going to be the one designing the whole signal chain. Yeah. You know, so... You know, on the website, we have a little kind of like a, a 
questionnaire format thing where it's basically like if you want to have a have us wire your your rig uh -huh. you read through this thing and if any of these you know kind of prerequisites don't work with you then we're not going to be the ones wiring uh -huh. it, you know so uh one of those means one of the thing the big one is like you have to know your signal chain already sure. yeah if I'm not going to be sitting here messing with your things, yeah. trying to figure it out for you, you know? Well, like, hopefully if you're spending uh, hundreds or thousands of dollars on a pedal board, you're, you're familiar enough with your, your, yeah. your signal chain to know what you want to do. Yeah. And I think for the most part, most people are, you know, I know that we do have those customers that like nice things and they're just going to, you know, drop some money and okay. yeah. get something cool. And it's not to say that um, we're not doing a good job oh, with no. the signal pass. You know, we, we've, we've had people that, for instance, they'll just buy brand new shit, everything, all yeah. new pedals. And, I, and you know, my job is to say, hey, uh, you know, you have to sign off on this. So if you're going to buy all this stuff, you're just going to guess out of the blue, you know, number one, number two. That's on you, man. Yeah. Like, I'm not going to, we don't have the time to play all that stuff yeah, in here, exactly. you know um and basically once the pedal board is set up is it is it relatively permanent the wiring um, structure well yes and no uh the 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 wiring is all soldered so if somebody can solder they can re-solder yeah. it or they can call us and we can send them a new cable yeah the only thing that is usually permanent is the size uh -huh. yeah. right yeah um, for sure because you only have a certain <laughs> footprint yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, and we've we've been messing around. We messed around with some designs that were kind of like modular, uh -huh. but they're just it's it's we're just not going to do that. Yeah. You know, it's that's a pretty big undertaking. It is, and it's just not the style that yeah. we're looking for. You know, it, because yours. Yeah, I should say that your style is very sort of retro and it's and, and vintage style. Yeah, vintage with modern kind of functions. You know, exactly. Um, the wood pedal boards are are like. Pieces of furniture, pieces, yeah. very, very nice pieces of furniture. Yeah, yeah, you know, and we, I just really don't want to get away from it, you know. Yeah. I, there's, there's companies out there, competitors, if you, if you can call it that, of ours, that they're doing like all kinds of shit. Yeah. And it's just like, you know, our core thing is pedal boards. And surprisingly, we do a really good business with the pedal board parts. Uh -huh. um, surprisingly, like a great surprise. Like, I love that part of the business. Sure. But we see these other companies that do pedal boards, but they do like all these other things also. Mm -hmm. And they're small companies; like they have no business doing this many different things. Yeah. You know, the message that you're sending to people, it's just very mixed. Mm -hmm. You know, that's their deal; they can do whatever they want. But sure. <clears throat> you know, it's as for me, I like to try to drill it down and focus on. I want to make the best pedal board that I can make every time. You know, yeah. we're a small shop. Our prices are reflective of being a small shop. Sure. And a small custom shop, by the way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and 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 that's the cool thing about it is it's like, you know, the pricing is such where you're still gonna get a personal feel from each each purchase, you know. Sure. Even if somebody orders it through the internet, if they wanted to call in and talk to me, because I I'm the one answering the phone sure. and, and doing all the emails, they're going to talk to me, you know. Yeah. Um when it's not so busy, orders come in. I try to call everybody like as soon as the order comes in, even if it's like for a, a cable, yeah. a small $5 cable or a Voodoo Lab patch cable for, mm -hmm. you know, pa I try to call them and just thank them for the business, yeah. you know, because it's, we, I depend on it, yeah. you know, um, it's a small business, you know, I run this out of the bottom of my house, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> my kids running in and out, my <laughs> wife is coming in and out, you know, I mean, it's very much uh, an at home and small business, family business yeah. type thing. And, and all these little orders, they feed me, sure. they feed us, yeah, you know, exactly. so I try to call everybody, you know, and I think, you know, we have a lot of reviews on the website now. And <clears throat> one of the coolest things to see is, you know, when people respond you know after they get their order i think the shopping cart system sends them a, a, a way to respond like mm -hmm. hey do you want to leave feedback or yeah. something and yeah. so you know i don't look at those very often but sometimes i'll come across them and just be like really thankful you know yeah. like hey this guy called it was like a three or four dollar order he called and we talked for like five minutes and bullshit like it just really made my day you yeah. know so it's i like to be able to do that you know so one of the reasons why we're never going to have like a $50 thing is because 
and probably never be in any music stores where you know we do direct to consumer sure mm-hmm. we just can't afford to give money to the music stores yeah but yes you know they want a hundred percent on our stuff which i can understand that but we're just not set up to do that you know yeah. that money could be used for us in a bunch of different ways oh yeah you know marketing Absolutely. or mm-hmm. whatever yeah and so we're gonna we're gonna keep making high quality stuff and keep that personal touch how closely did you work with like voodoo labs and and dunlop and those those types of companies um you know um i know all those guys really well i mean some better than others you know voodoo lab we sell a lot of their stuff so Mm -hmm. um i i know they're you know the people that i deal with there i know them really well Mm -hmm. um the the dunlop people we did a we did a gibson nam project with them so Uh you know we had like eight pedal boards to build out um, plus the wiring, plus the pedal installation. So there was like 150 pedals all at one time wow. and some power supply, you know, like 20 power supplies. And wow. so we got to know the rep for, for that area of, yeah. of, of Dunlop pretty well, you know, and all the community is pretty good. You know, like I've done not the best job of, of opening the channels to like these other companies. Like we're, we're, we're trying to do more of that. Like uh-huh. I am personally trying to reach out and work with other people like collabor collaborations, you know, either yeah, giveaways or uh, you know, Hey, we're going to build this part of this thing and then we're going to ship it to you. And then this person's going to finish it yeah. and do put their end on it, you know? Um, so we're always kind of limited in what we can do time wise, you know? So, but I'm trying to build these kind of relationships up a little bit, you yeah. know, because the community of, of musicians, it's, it's different. It's, it's a good different, oh, you yeah. know, um, from the music makers, you know, to the people producing it, to, to, there's so many ends of it. And, and we've been real lucky meeting all the good people of it, you know, customers included, like, you know, when I first started my cousin who owns bananas at large, Alan Rosen, he, okay. let, he let me take, you know, some of these pedal boards down to his shop to sell them down uh-huh. there. Cause you know, I had no, nobody knew who, what they I didn't were. know about this connection. This is great. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so Alan was great. He was instrumental in fact, you know, because he not only gave me a, a place to get them, you know, shown and traffic, he gave me, you know, honest criteria, you know, anybody who knows Alan, you know, knows that he's not going to bullshit you uh-huh. and, and sugarcoat anything, you know, he's just going to give it straight up. And, you know, I remember a couple times him saying like, yeah, these are good, but dude, they need to come a long way. Yeah. You know, like you need to keep, keep, keep working on this. Has Alan owned Bananas at Large for how, for how long has he owned it? Um, you know, he, I, it, it's uh, already as a store, right? Yeah. It, I, you know, I'm going to mess this history up, but it's an old store. Sure. There's been, in you San know, Rafael, California, San Rafael, you know, it's uh, an old it's store. On 4th, 4th street. It was on 4th street. He just yeah. recently moved it. Um, lots of, you know, iconic rock and roll history on that. I place. can remember going in as a kid and seeing Neil Sean, oh, dude. And Carlos Santana, Yo, yeah, and all the Grateful Dead guys. Yep, um, Joe, the Metallica dudes. Sure, you know, yeah, I yeah. mean, um, it's endless. You know, anybody from the Bay Area music scene has probably been in and for that sure. Place. Has been there, yeah. <laughs> if not, not and, probably. And Alan been there. probably has them on speed dial. You yeah. know, um, Alan, let me put the put the stuff in the stores. Just super grateful for that. You yeah, because it got them out there. I was surprised because I was always a little nervous to put give. I'm doing this new thing. Yeah. And I wasn't sure how people were going to react to it, you know, Uh and it's, it's nerve wracking. Sure. You know, cause, cause music people are, are honest, you know, if something sucks, you know, you're going to hear about it. That scared me, you know, uh, and it still does, you know, part of my daily motivation is, you know, to, to get, to kick everything out of here, quality, sure. High quality. So there's no reason that anybody's going to have to call back and let, and, unless they want to say thank you for making me this thing. Yeah. You know, that's the, the goal is to, to get everything out of here so it lands without incident. You know, shipping carrier mishaps yeah. are unavoidable. But uh, other than that, like, if it's leaving here, you know, we've had maybe a handful of bad experiences. Uh-huh. You know, in seven years. That's great. Thousands of orders. Yeah. It's really good. Oh, yeah. I, I accept it, you know. Yeah. and But I... 
I go those extra miles, you know, to, to make sure that people are happy, yeah. you know, emailing on the weekends, responding right away to emails coming in, inquiries, sure. you know, um, it's just how I do it. And let's name drop. Are there, have there been any uh, famous people, household names that you've done pedal boards for? Household, the most recent I'd say was uh, Gary Holt from okay. Slayer. Yeah, um, or Exodus. <laughs> both, you know. Uh, well, the pedal board we built for him actually was made for both bands. So okay. it had the, you know, I think on in Slayer, he's stage right. And on yeah. Exodus, he's left. So we have the input outputs all oriented. Oh, so, wow. so Warren, his tech, can basically patch it in whatever gig they're doing. When he purchased from you, did he have his signal chain? Did he have his provide you the pedals? And you wired it for him, or did? Yeah, or... yeah, yeah. He had a kind of a base idea. He he was trying out, you know, because he uses, I think, a lot of a uh, rack gear, you know, yes. and yeah. and I think it's fair, not automated, but I think that it's like you know, per song, these things get switched on, and and so, but he he loves pedals. He's a total gearhead guy, yeah. you know, fucking guitars, all this stuff, and so the pedal board was just like an extra. Yeah. layer for him you know yeah. so so he had some 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 small builders kind of come together and do him some custom shit yeah. you know he had a switcher put on there so like a loop switcher uh -huh. so he could just swap in and out like six to seven different pedals yeah and um have you thought about working on switching systems like that i mean because i think with the it stuff you might yeah i mean i really like the wiring part of that stuff you know because it it is very it based where the cable's got to get strapped down yeah. anybody who kind of sees our pedal board installation and then you flip the thing over to look at the bottom uh -huh. even if you didn't see the logo plate on the front you know most people that pay attention to this industry they sure. know that my hands or somebody from in here have been working on that, uh -huh. you know, it's, it's labeled and strapped down really nice, yeah. you know? Um, and so, uh, yeah, I enjoy, I enjoy wiring it, it, especially when people know what they want and they, they, they give us instructions like, Hey, this is the size board we're going to do. Yeah. These are the things that are going on it. We want them here, 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 here. And we just do our job, which is to build the board, the case, wire it up, make sure it works and then give it to the musician. Yeah. Because Gary's going to be able to do whatever he wants with that. You know, he could make, you know, guys at his level, um, they can make anything sound good. Oh, yeah. You know, and so. But it's really a test to your, to the quality of your build that he's using something like this on the road. Yeah, yeah. Taking a, a pedal board on the road. Yeah. Is, is I, I can tell you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, and, and disgruntled workers and oh, yeah. flight people, you know, throwing the stuff around. Um, definitely an extra layer of build quality Be when you got to go on the road like that. You know, it's obviously in a road case. Yeah. Um, um, just looking at your, <coughs> your small boards and having that as a case, it's an, ex it's an excellent, like, fly, fly rig. Yeah. I mean, we, you know, depending on the, the gig styles you know the type you know because because we do a little flat board uh -huh. that's good for like a fly date so if you got like a quick thing you're gonna go do where you can carry something on we uh -huh. make a real small briefcase like style thing that has everything it's the case the board you can store your cables inside of it it'll hold the power supply inside of it and be you know small enough if your pedal collection will allow it yeah. to carry it onto an airplane and be super quick about shit. Yeah. You know, so, uh, yeah, yeah, it depends, you know, or we make the all the way to the road case where you show up to the airport and check the thing. Yeah, that's yeah. badass. Yeah, yeah. That's excellent. Yeah. The, the type of cable you use, is it, is it proprietary? Or can you tell us what, what you use? Yeah, the for the most part, it's a, we're a Mogami house, man. You know, um, <clears throat> I met, you know, again, because I had no real experience with any of this before, um, we started using a solderless uh, thing way back. Uh -huh. I'm familiar. In the very beginning. Yeah, I remember. I know. Um, and we just were having problems with it. Not that the, the quality wasn't bad with them. The users were having problems figuring out how to terminate these things. Yeah. And so we were getting all these calls like, hey, how do you do this? Yeah. Or it's not working. And I was just <clears throat> answering so many of the same questions over and over and over that it just seemed like it was the time to make the switch. And yeah. so we, we went from solderless. It wasn't very long into it either. I think, you know, I started the thing in like two, late 2011, officially in 2012. And we were 
completely off solder list by 2013 or oh, wow. 14 at the latest. Uh-huh. And so, and that was really a, the be, one of the best things because the cable, I mean, it's soldered. Yeah. You know, it's unless you physically Pull bash it, it yeah. they don't break really. You yeah. know, um, and are the solderless cables? You just don't know. Yeah, you know, you, drop, you just don't you, know, dude. Something gets dropped. That's the. That's fucking, all it takes. That's the thing about those is you just and then you don't have to go through know. All your connections. You just don't know. That's the. That's the, the. The. The part that I don't dig about that is they work and then they don't work for what re- what reason? Who knows? Yeah. You know. Oh, and there's all these different techniques to get them to work, and you got to watch YouTube videos, and it's like, dude, if you know how to solder something. These are going to work every time. time. And super for a easy. That does a lot of gigs a year. Super that's, cheap too. Yeah, that's important. You know, we we sell a lot of these kits. You know, um, I feel like I am kind of like an advocate for teaching people how to solder, and uh, we have a really cool product that's just a patch cable DIY kit. Mm-hmm. And so it's base. It's a base product, meaning it comes with you twenty three nineteen Mogami, which is their flagship patch cable. Uh-huh. Um, it's spiral bound ground and the inside jacket, nice and protected. It's a flexible cable. It's cheap. It works. You know, I yeah. mean, what more? It sounds good if you can say that even sounding good. Um, and all the products, the plugs, the Switchcraft plugs, the G and H plugs, they just work. Yeah. You know, if you solder it the right way, it's just gonna work. Yeah. There's, you know, you don't have to worry about it. Travel and get bumped around and, you know, just figure it. Think of it like this. Does, you know, the Metallica guys, do they use solderless connections on their stuff? Does, you know, who's using that? Who's touring around well, that, I, that has the chance to use either one? Yeah. Preferably, which one are you going to use? There's no competition, yeah. you know, <laughs> I, I think. Yeah. So, you know, this kit that I'm selling, it's super cheap. You know, most people have soldering iron. If you don't, you should learn how to solder. If you're a guitar player, if you're a musician, you, you should learn how to solder anyways because it's just a it's a valuable tool to, to know how to do. You know, you can make cables. You can make your own patch cables, instrument cables. Yeah. You know, it'll you'll save yourself so much time and money and be able to do something like that, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Um, and it's super useful, yep. you know. Yeah. Power supplies. Yeah. Uh, is it mostly just Voodoo Lab that you're using, or is it others? Yeah, we have. Um, there's so many, you know. Um, we are homeboys with Voodoo Lab. They're right up the way from us. That makes it real easy. <clears throat> but most importantly, it's like, you know, in the seven years I've been doing this, I don't know how many of these things we've sold and installed. I've literally have never gotten one call back from anybody saying that it broke. Yeah. Or any of that stuff. The couple times that we did have some weird incidents happen, they were so cool about fixing it, like, without question. I just, I'm not going to use any other brands, you know. We use Strymon and Voodoo Lab, and we're actually, um, we're in we're in development making our own uh-huh. brand. Oh, wow. Yeah. So oh, great. So, you know, sorry, Voodoo Lab and Strymon. <laughs> no, eventually, we were going to have our own, you know. It's just time for that. Yeah. Yeah. If people are curious about the pedal boards, like, Pricing and stuff like that is that all on the website? Yeah, you Rather know, than me asking you ballpark figures for each set. Each yeah, set. yeah. the The website westcoastpedalboard.com. It's you know brand new site. All the prices are there. The only thing it doesn't really list, and we're still kind of trying to figure out how to display it properly, is the custom shop. Uh-huh. You know, for people that truly need or want something that what we call our standard line doesn't offer. Uh-huh. You know. Um, so custom, not not well graphics like like racing stripes and stuff like that. So for instance, yeah. So the standard line you can get four sizes, four standard sizes of pedal board. Uh-huh. Um, you can get a hard case, you can get a soft case, you can get a flight case mm-hmm. for those four standard sizes. So the who does your your soft cases? Studio slips. Studio slips. Is yeah. Number one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man, and you know again. Local. Local. I'm so lucky because Susan, one of the coolest people, helped me out so many different ways. Um, I just, I love her, man. You know, she's a total rock and roll chick. Yes. You know, totally that person that you would hope she would be. She's that person, you know. And and, uh, her son, Cole, is just 
helping her out now with the company, you know. And he's an awesome guy. I think, a little side note, people would be cool. Her husband is Mike B. from Mesa Boogie. Yeah, there uh, we go. We don't need to say anything <laughs> yeah. else about that, you know. The hard cases, do you make, Are you? do you construct the hard cases for yourself? Yeah, so the flight cases, the road cases, we have made from uh, our, our homeboys, Nate, down in Get Off My Case. They're in okay. Southern California. Okay. So they do all the road cases, and we do all the hard cases, like the Tolex amp style stuff. We yeah. do all that in-house. Which are gorgeous. Yeah, thank you, man. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're uh, <clears throat> you know, ramping it up right now. Cool. Going to be making a bunch of them real quick here. Very good. Yeah. In the future, what kind of things are you guys working on for the future? Or um, I should say you. What kind of things are you working on for the future? Yeah, you know, the, the big thing was the website. So that's kind of going to be an ongoing kind of like tuning it up. Yeah. I'm really hoping to get the custom shop to a point where people can build something easily. You know, uh-huh. there's we offer so many options and... And allow the customers to do so many different things with these. It's really hard to portray this easily yeah. where the brass tack converts into a sale. Like yeah. right now, we have this form. So if you want a custom pedal board and, a, and one of our hard cases, for instance, you have to go through this form. You have to put your name in there. You know, some people don't like putting their name in there. Sure. They, don't want, you, they don't want me to know that, you yeah. know even though I don't care. But the form, it takes, you know, it takes you a little bit of knowledge of what we do, what the terminology. Yep. And, you know, you got to go through seven, eight pages of a questionnaire to get to your price. Yeah. And it's just like, it's a pain in the ass. I find that there's no other way because I want to I wanna offer to the people that actually want to go balls out crazy. I will personally put little, you know, marks, you know, wherever you want them in the pedal board deck. Uh-huh. There's an option to have a custom top deck made. So if you have a, a rig that is specific to like a gig, like if you're a touring player and you're going to be playing the same set every night and you want the smallest, most compact, tight package, we will poke holes in the exact same spot where they need to be. So uh-huh. the thing is like streamlined. Wow. You know, you need a place to be able to, to put that. Yeah. So I'm trying to find out how to get that. Uh streamlined because i want to offer the custom shop experience to more people sure right now i think the the new website we don't even have an option people just have to call now yeah yeah so but feel free to call because you can yeah (laughs) you know that's the hardest thing is to to you know to let people know like hey you know if you have questions call yeah it seems kind of douchey but we have the like call us on there and we have a live chat thing like Mm -hmm. Trying to make it super obvious that we're trying to get people to talk to us. Yeah. Because, you know, not everybody is experienced with pedal boards, you know. I mean, I'd say one out of three, 33% maybe, brand new user. Oh, yeah. You know, like never had a pedal board ever before. And so we want those people. We want to educate. We want to, we want you to get something that's going to work, you know. Um, as a as a guy who's played a lot of gigs with national acts, the one thing I mean, I see all kinds of different amps. I see all the one thing that they all have is a pedal board. Yeah. Even yeah. if they have you know Bradshaw r- r- racks with all the different um, you mm-hmm. know all kinds of switching systems and all that, they still have a pedal board with the basics on the pedal. Yeah, board. yeah. I mean, it's you know it's not only fun, but they're you know I mean they're useful. Yeah. They're, oh, they're, uh, absolutely. You know, in in the the whole stomp box kind of craze man i mean it seemed like when i first started maybe it was going on before but felt like in like 2012 and 13 it just went nuts oh like yeah people were just and pedal boards too there's there it felt like there was like a hundred people making the same thing i was making you know yeah. i was like what the hell happened here why, why? well certainly pedals had like gone yeah and people are seeking out pedals from their childhood and oh all yeah kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah crazy. it's it's a i mean i was I, I had to, you know, sell a bunch of pedals because I was in that whole thing, too, where I felt like I need a goddamn wall full of pedals over here just to keep up with all these other people that have walls of pedals. Yeah, you know? And exactly. I was like, dude, you need to get rid of this stuff. Yeah. You know, I'm a fuzz guy. I like to have a little the OC2, a little boss pedal, sure. you know. I mean, dude, and I've got a, a Watson FX fuzz. I mean, I've got a few things, yeah, you know. Very cool. Fun, well, fun business. Great. I'm yeah. glad to hear it. Yeah. Well, it's been great talking to you, Spencer. Thanks for and coming. My, yes, absolutely. Pleasure. I yeah. To meet your dog. <laughs> <laughs> the, yeah, so thank you. Once again, website. WestCoastPedalBoard.com. Boom. Yeah.
Thanks for listening to Have Guitar Will Travel. You can catch up on all the things I'm doing at thedeadlies.com. And I'm on all the social media platforms as well. And please support Vintage Guitar and all the wonderful things they do because they do many, many wonderful things for us guitar players. Thanks. Please subscribe. Please tell a friend. And I'll see you guys next week. Bye, guys. <laughs>